Hello and welcome to Fiber Town. This is episode 84. It is 10, 15, 14. I am Chain of Fools, Emily. Um, Fiber Town on Instagram, Chain of Fools on Ravelry. This sleepy girl is Alice. <laughs> She's, it is incredibly nasty weather today and typically on a day like that, Alice just sleeps. So she's like, what are you doing? Waking me up, this cozy in your lap. Let me just sit here and close my eyes and go back to sleep. Because Alice is tired. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I want to say hi to Bookish Stitcher, who introduced herself in the introductions thread this week. She has a podcast, the Bookish Stitcher Podcast. And I believe she said it's on YouTube. So thank you so much for introducing yourself, and I'm sure I will I will put you on my list and check you out. Um, oh, there is a, did you all watch the, um, oh goodness. I know some of you have discovered some new podcasts through the ones I mentioned last week. Um, and there's another one I wanna talk about, and I'm drawing a complete blank, purple hair. Okay. Uh, there's not enough caffeine in the world on a day like today. Oh my goodness. Minerva Turkey. Minerva Turkey Knits. She is on YouTube as well. Um, really good podcast. Um, her first effort was lovely. She's a lovely knitter. Um, really interesting stuff. So I'm enjo I really enjoyed her first episode and looking forward to the next. Okay. Um, items of business. It is Socktober, i.e. the Carolina Fiber Girls are hosting a whole Socktober extravaganza. They are an audio podcast, really awesome podcast. Um, so go and check them out, Carolina Fiber Girls, and they have coupon codes and prizes. Socktober, everybody. Um, so go and check them out for their Socktober extravaganza. We have scrap season. The knit along is still going on, and um, oh goodness. I'm just not as prepared today as I usually am. Somebody sent me some really great links um, for other patterns that use scraps, and I'll have to post them in the show notes because I'm drawing a blank right now. But yes, keep it up. I will show you my progress on my sock yarn blanket today. Um, make a note. All right. Um, the Hudson Valley Knits podcast, who, um, which is done by Amy Memers on Ravelry, she is having her senior love along, and she is requesting. This dog just needs to go back to sleep. She is requesting um, that you knit washcloths for a Veterans Administration Hospital. Oh my gosh, this dog is. She's just half alive today. Um, which is a 250 bed hospital, and so she needs that many washcloths. And it's, since it's the the VA, and it's mostly older folks, it's mostly men. So she is requesting manly or gender neutral washcloths. Um, and she has prez, uh, prizes for that as well. And she, Amy has a fantastic podcast and um, yay. So I have knit one washcloth for that. I'm going to try to do more, but yeah, check it out. Hudson Valley Knits, um, senior level long washcloths, just hundred percent cotton, super easy to knit. It's a good way to test out stitch patterns. Um, and it's for a very, she's personally going to be giving these out. So excellent. The last item of business is the funds that through your generosity, I've been able to raise and give to Wendy Silly Fru, who is fighting hairy cell leukemia, hashtag crush the sack. <laughs> and she's still in the hospital waiting for her blood counts to go up so she can be out in the world and braving um, possible infections. Right now she doesn't have the, the blood count for that. So she's still in the hospital, not working, medical costs. So lots of people are, are doing things. So just Google, not Google, on Instagram, look for the hashtag crush the sack and see what else is out there for her. But um, through Fibertown Designs and you all, we were able to raise $120 to donate to her, um, to her fund. So thank you so, so much. Thank you for the response to the MPG. Uh, portion of that is going to her as well. So really excellent. Thank you. 
I have one last thank you before we do whips and foes and spinning and up and coming. And uh, October is my birthday month, and usually I make a big deal of it. And for whatever reason, I don't know, it just hasn't been on my radar this month that much this month. Um, but I was surprised and delighted to receive a package yesterday from Cookie Lady Knits, who is Heidi from California. Look at this cute card. Where our Argyle sweaters come from. And just, you know, thank you so much. This was totally not necessary, but it was so fun because it was a surprise. And I think she had my address because we'd done a D-stash. She bought some D-stash for me. She knit me a purple Boston Terrier washcloth. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Can you see the Boston? It's amazing and I love it thank you Heidi thank you for this thank you for the donation to the podcast that definitely helps with all the shipping costs and um, hosting costs and looks just like my real Boston Terrier except a little more awake okay. <laughs> all right so today I have things to show you all um, let me start with my finished object this is a weaving item it is a scarf. It, the yarn is a fingering weight by Aloha Blue, and I really love the way these columns of orange came out. Isn't that pretty? It is a scarf, and it has issues. So I've rearranged my craft room, and I used to warp my scarves a certain length that worked for me and that went from my table where my loom was to the handle of my sliding glass door and I would wrap my warp around that um, and that was the ideal length for scarves this is not a scientific method <laughs> and there are ways to measure your warp that are much more effective than the way I was doing it um, so I have a new setup and I warped using I put my warping peg on a chair I hooked, I clamped it to a chair and estimated the distance. The distance of my warp ended up being way too long. So the result of that is that I have a scarf that is way too short because my warp used up so much yarn. See, it's only that short, it's only that long. My warp used up so much yarn that I didn't have enough to finish the weft. At, at a length I would have liked. So this is probably going to go to a child because it comes down to about my natural waist, a little bit above my belly button actually. So that is a bit of a fail. Um, the other fail, well the selvages are always an issue for me and usually I get decent selvages. That just means the edge stitches. See they're pretty, they're pretty wavy. And so, like, like here, look at that. See the difference there? Yeah. And then this is the other issue. My warp um, tension, I think, is the problem. And I'm not sure how to fix this, because I feel like the warp tension is even when I start, but then it is not even. So do you see that waviness right there? When I wind my, my cloth onto the cloth beam, and then I retension the warp, some strings pull more than others. And so I end up with this, this is where the tension was was more than say the stitches over, the strands over, the threads over here. So I get this sort of, the weft sort of pulls out of shape. I don't know what I'm doing or how to fix that. If you know how to fix that, other, you know, maybe I just need to be more careful how I tension my warp. That's probably the easy answer. But I love, so I've knit, I've woven scarves that are better than this. But I really like the colors. And maybe I'll give this to my niece. I have another little girl in mind too who might like it. So anyway, that's my one FO this week. I have lots and lots of whips. Let me show you first my, the Ginny's cardigan. That is from the unofficial Harry Knits, Harry, <laughs> Harry Knits, no, Harry Potter Knits, 
And this is the cover cardigan. It's by Mary Chiba. And I'm knitting this for my daughter out of Classically Princess, okay? This is like a 120 yard ball. I'm on the second ball now. And this has cashmere, angora, merino, nylon, and like polyamide. So two kinds of synthetics in there. Um, it's got a lovely hand. The angora is just like a whisper of angora, okay? There's no shedding, but I think it gives it, uh, there's a great stitch definition. Take a look. Isn't that pretty? Got my array of stitch markers. I've got a, a Jenny the Potter with a little knitted stamp on it. Let's see if we can get the thing to focus. Anyway, and we have a lovely rainbow, a Boston from Wee Ones, and a Jelby, Jelby little felted ball with a sheepy on it. So, as I said, this is the smallest size that I'm knitting, and really super cute. Love the hand of this yarn. It's amazing. If I have enough left over, I might make myself a mama vertebrae with this design up the back. So I have a lot of this yarn. <laughs> so, there are pockets on the front. Let me show you. They look like that. I'm thinking of doing an owl cable up the front as a little modification to make it my own. So that's work in progress number one. What else? Oh, I have also cast on out of Jameson Shetland Spindrift, Spindrift, sorry, two ply Shetland yarn. I think this is Shetland from the Shetlands. It's distributed in the, yeah, it's distributed in the U.S. by another company. And I got this, I got a variety of these colors at a yarn store in, um, outside of Newport, Rhode Island. So, I am doing the Spilly Jane Cupcake Mitts. And the cupcakes have just started appearing. Let me see if I can show you adequately. You see those cupcakes? Yay! Now, they seem a bit big. So, if they're a bit big, I guess I'll just have to have them. Which would be so sad. They were tentatively for my daughter as well. Um, and I don't have as many colors as the pattern calls for. So I'm going to be improvising and changing the cupcakes like you have vanilla cupcakes with chocolate frosting and chocolate cupcakes with vanilla frosting and vanilla frost vanilla cupcakes with strawberry frosting and these are the only colors of Shetland of the Spindrift that I have I'm gonna have to use a red at some point like scraps red that won't be the same kind of yarn but it's just for like a cherry on top kind of thing so that is just sort of out of the gate starting I haven't done much on it but that's fun. Spilly Jane cupcake mitts. Um, I also have on DPNs also. And, you know, I tried recently to put something on Magic Loop and I hated it. I used to love Magic Loop and I'm just so a DPN girl right now. Could change, could go back and forth. The pendulum swings. The only constant is change. But for now, it's DPNs. And I have a whole big mess here because I am striping two different yarns and they are singles yarns and so they are very energized <laughs> okay <clears throat> take a look <laughs> love it this is this is so much fun that this represents 24 hours of knitting I don't know these let me put them on they are gonna be arm warmers and this is something that I've had in my stash like a project marinating in my stash for a long time, years and years. And lately I'm just gravitating towards those kinds of projects as well as yarns that I've had for years and years, like my orange yarn over there. Yeah, got that ages ago, ages and ages ago. So this is, look at that, 
These are going to be long arm warmers, and I cast on 64 stitches with Zauberball. Schuppelwolle Zauberball. Um, Zauberball. There you go. This is what it looks like when it's just knit straight. So it grayed, it, it's a color progression from black to gray to white. So, and the other yarn is Noro Korean Sock. And <clears throat> the Zauber Ball is the one that is especially twirly. This has been caked up for so long that, I don't know, look, just it doesn't have as much energy anymore. Um, I am so loving this. So the idea is that I cast on in black with the Zauber Ball, and then I do the Noro. And I'm not really doing, as you can see, the stripes are a varied width. I'm just doing it for as kind of, I'm manipulating the colors quite a bit. In fact, there's so much black that I've taken out quite a bit. I've done a lot of color management, but that's okay. I don't mind sort of wasting the yarn to get these results because, so I've got the gradient, the color progression in the black, and I'm starting finally to get to the gray. And then the Noro is progressing through all the wacky Noro colors. And at the same time, I'm going to get more grays, lighter grays, then to white, and then back to black. So these are going to be like elbow length gloves. So I'm going to do the gray for maybe three more stripes, and I'll manage that color as well. And then the top of the hand will probably be the white with the Noro. And then I have a whole other set of these two balls for the other one. So this is a lot of fun. Really enjoying it. Originally, I had wanted to make socks like this. Now I know better. I'm not making socks out of a single. Not happening. So, really fun knitting. Um, sock yarn blankie. Yes, yes, yes. I have been having a lot of fun. I did not get an end weaving in session this week as I had wanted to, but that's all right. So let me show you what's happened on this this week. Um, here's a new block from Seashore Sharon Scraps and another Seashore Sharon Scrap and another Seashore Sharon Scrap. All the ones with markers on them are new this week. This one is new. It's not yet completed. That is String Theory. That's from my stash. And there's a Seashore Sharon. Ooh, look at this one. That's from 3U's Twisted in Fiber. That's from my stash. Love that, love that base. And that's it this week. Man, it was a light week on this thing. Um, I'm going to knit a square at Rhinebeck. Cause, um, I just gave away something. <laughs> we'll talk more about it later. Uh, I'm going to knit an edge square at Rhinebeck, one of the ones that gets attached later that doesn't get the stitches picked up so that I'll have that square as a memory. can't keep a secret. Um, that's it. That's whips and FOs, everybody. Let's do spinning. I have spun this so quick and dirty. Look at that. Ugh, it's like mint chocolate chip with some blues in there. Spun woolen, two ply. This is Highland Handmaid's Braid that I've had for a while. Kennebec. And this is an interesting um, blend. It is superwash merino, merino, and silk. 240 yards I got. And I think this is going to be a hat for my knitworthy uncle. I made him a hat last year out of hand spun, and he really likes it. He says women talk to him when he wears it. So I'm making him another girl magnet, girl magnet hat. And his wife wants one too, so maybe I'll make them matching hats. Would that be too corny? Um, okay, so I also started spinning my Jacob, the mixed part of the fleece that I showed you all last week. I had been um, doing Diz roving off my drum carter. Take a look. Came out great. Really beautiful. This is a smallish skein. It's two yards and 70, two, gr two ounces and 75 yards. And I 
really loved spinning the preparation that I did and I think the yarn is lovely. Let me show you. See? It's a lovely, lovely Jacob. Mm. <laughs> so this is one that I washed and processed up until this this stage of the game. So I've got a ton more Jacob. I have I've got 10 ounces of this color alone. Um, a little over 10 ounces. So that's just going to get spun an ounce at a time and then plied. And then I'll start working on the third color. The third and final color. Okay. Did I mention Rhinebeck? I do believe I did. Um, I'm going to Rhinebeck. It is a shocker. Um, I had no idea that this was going to happen. Um, you know, you saw all I bought at Shenandoah. I, I spent my, my fiber budget for this part of the year at Shenandoah. Um, I was very generously invited by a friend who is going and has accommodations. So... I am just going to go and treat this as um, soaking in the ambiance of Rhinebeck and basically seeing the people. That's what I really am excited about. Um, I have meetups planned. There's a podcaster meetup. Um, I have things I'm bringing to some people and I just can't wait to meet people that I've, I've known online and I haven't seen their faces in person. And um, I'm super excited. I'm super, super excited. I will be there both days. I'm dr we're driving up on Friday. And we are unfortunately staying about an hour away from Rhinebeck in um, Connecticut, right over the border. So, um, but what an opportunity. And I cannot wait to see how it compares to Maryland, which is my, it's just my home festival. It's a wonderful festival. So I'm excited to see how it compares and just mainly to see all the people and do and see all the things. Um, I, it still hasn't really sunk in yet. Now, what is a small sadness for me is that I don't have a dedicated Rhinebeck sweater. It's only a small sadness. Um, the weather's looking pretty hot, although that could change. Um, so I will have Rhinebeck cowls and shawls, most likely. And if it, it might be a little colder on Sunday. I might have a sweater then. Um, and I'm sure I will buy a thing or two. It is my birthday on Sunday. I will be at Rhinebeck on my birthday. So every year it's on my birthday at some point. And it makes me kind of grumpy because, you know, it's my birthday. I should be at Rhinebeck. And this year... It's true, I will be. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Um, and I hope I see you there. I will have buttons and I just wanna, yeah, come say hi to me. I'm not gonna be like on a mission like I am at Maryland. I don't wanna stand in lines. Um, I just wanna relax and have an apple cider donut and a beer and all the other good things and enjoy it, so. I hope to see you there, and if I don't see you there, I will talk about it. I, I might do a little filming. I won't be there with my husband, so he's kind of the videographer of the couple. Um, he's the one who makes all the Fiber Festival videos, so if I feel up to it, then I will give it a shot, and we'll see. Okay, one last up-and-coming thing, and I'm so excited. Um... This is the design that I've been working on out of some yarn from Un Unwind Yarn Company. And as you know, probably, I was in Spain for a good part of the summer and was very inspired by, um, oh, there's a lot of design inspiration on this trip for me. And yeah, so we were in, um, southern Spain where there is a lot of architecture that's influenced by North African architecture, Middle Eastern architecture, so basically Moorish, um, the Moors. And <clears throat> I knit and designed a hat in mitten set inspired by a lot of the lines and designs that I saw. 
Let me show you a picture. I'm super excited. Um, this is the Moorish hat and mitten set. That's my lovely friend Heather who's modeling it. Isn't she beautiful? Her eyes match the yarn. The yarn is amazing. It is a targi, 100% targi, milled, uh, I think grown and milled in the US. There she is again, wearing the set. And let me give you some close-ups. There is the hat. The hat and the mitt, mittens share the same ribbing, which is, um, how do you say it? It's, it's, it's an interesting, it is a rib. It's not a cabled rib, but it is a tw it has twisted stitches in one or two of the rows. Um, not twisted stitches, but switch stitches that, that change position. So I guess technically it's a cable. And the mittens, so the hat has that, and then it's a very plain top. The mittens are more elaborate. They have a Moorish inspired, inspired cable on the front. Um, you can see a little bit here, like a minaret inspired cable. It's not the best picture. And then the inside is, the, the palm of the hand is plain. So let me show you in person. Take a look. So this is the right hand, and it's this beautiful yarn dyed by Dana, and you've got this sort of pearl delineation of the thumb gusset on both sides. And it is, you know, if you can follow, it is charted and written. The pattern has both, um, both kind of, kinds of directions. And yeah, it's beautiful. It's warm, it's, the yarn is squishy, and I think it's very hard wearing as well. And you can modify this if you're not into the cables, you don't have to knit them. You could just have a matching hat and mittens with this very elegant ribbing. So the hat, oh my goodness, this is not gonna go over my hair very well, but the hat is a quick knit and you can knit it. There's two sizes, so you could knit it slouchier if you'd like, but this is more of a beanie. And that really looks weird. Let me take down my hair. But my friend Heather wore it best. <laughs> I took the pictures she modeled. So yeah, a very cozy, lovely yarn. And those are the Moorish hat and mittens. Now, um, the yarn is perfect. For this pattern and Dana will have kits for this oh that's really attractive we'll have kits for this at fiber in the borough on November 1st and the pattern will come out sometime that weekend as well for purchase on Ravelry if you are not going to fiber in the borough and Dana will have yarn in her shop as well um, I'm not sure which color she'll have but check it out it's really a lovely lovely yarn there's the hat so um, yeah, just a few weeks till that is released. So that is sort of a sneak peek into what's up and coming. Um, is that it, Alice? You want to make another appearance before we say goodbye? Mm. Mommy, why you wake me up? Man, she's usually more lively than this. Oh, don't I even get a kiss? Want to say hello to the peoples? Nope. All right. Usually we get a little more enthusiasm. Did you see that? That was a burp. Oh my gosh, she is like a rag doll today. Okay, well, I hope I see you at Rhinebeck. And if I don't see you at Rhinebeck, I will see you next week when I record again and tell you all about it. Um, until then, you all take care. Bye-bye.